Welcome to Dermatology Explained. Today's video presentation is focused on a condition called keratosis pilaris. Keratosis pilaris is amongst one of the most common skin presentations and can be considered a normal variant. It is the most common form of follicular keratosis. This condition is multifactorial and innocuous and often affects the extensive surfaces of the proximal extremities, such as the lateral aspects of the upper arms. Keratosis first appears in early childhood and often progresses, becoming more extensive during the second decade of life. It is characterized by small, rough, folliculocentric keratotic papules, as seen here in this image. Who gets keratosis pilaris? It is most common in adolescence, with 50 to 80% affected. This disorder is also frequently seen in adults, with 40% of the adult population affected. It can affect all races, and it affects males and females in similar proportions. Its onset is often the first decade of life, and symptoms worsen during puberty. Associations include other dry skin conditions, ichthyosis vulgaris, xerosis, atopic dermatitis, and atopy. In terms of the underlying genetics and pathogenesis, it is an autosomal dominant condition with variable penetrance. Some theories to explain the phenotype of keratosis pilaris includes abnormal follicular keratinization, which causes excess keratin buildup and plugging of the follicle orifices. This can then lead to inflammatory papules and redness around the hair follicle. Coiled hairs are often present within lesions and may play a role in furthering the inflammation. It is thought that filigrin mutations may play a role in keratosis pilaris. Filigrin mutations are also involved in atopic dermatitis and therefore, this may be a common link between atopic dermatitis and keratosis pilaris. The clinical features of keratosis pilaris includes rough texture of skin on the upper arms and legs. However, it can also present on other parts of the body, including the back and the buttocks and behind the legs. It may have associated erythema, particularly around the follicles. It presents as goosebump-like folliculocentric keratotic papules, which represent plugging of the hair follicle ostia. Often, a small coiled hair can be found beneath the papule. There are a number of variants of keratosis pilaris that has been described. This includes keratosis pilaris rubra, keratosis pilaris atrophicans, keratosis folliculares spinulosa decalvans, and atrophoderma vermiculatum. Keratosis pilaris rubra is a variant of keratosis pilaris, with more prominent erythema and with more widespread areas of skin involvement in some cases, but without the atrophy or hyperpigmentation noted in certain keratosis pilaris variants. It seems to be relatively common but an uncommonly reported condition. The next variant is keratosis pilaris atrophicans. Keratosis pilaris atrophicans is an uncommon form of keratosis pilaris. It is characterized by scar-like follicular depressions and loss of hair, particularly in the eyebrow areas. This results in atrophy and permanent loss of hair in the affected areas. Keratosis pilaris is also called Uerythema ufrinogens. Uerythema, spelled U L E R Y T H E M A, means scar with redness, and ufrio refers to the eyebrow. The next variant is Folliculitis spinulosa decalvans, or keratosis folliculitis spinulosa decalvans, also known as KFSD. This is a hereditary disorder of the hair follicle, which presents with both scarring, scarring alopecia and follicular papules affecting the scalp and other bodies, 
other body areas. It usually follows an X-linked pattern of inheritance, but sporadic and autosomal dominant cases can also be seen. The next variant is Atrophoderma verniculatum. This is a rare progressive benign follicular disorder that affects primarily children. It is characterized by the development of inflammatory keratotic papules of the face that form pitted, atrophic, and depressed scars in a reticular or honeycomb pattern, as seen here. There are a number of other conditions that are associated with keratosis pilaris. This includes atopic dermatitis, ichthyosis vulgaris, erythromelanosis follicularis facii et coli, which comprises erythema, brown pigmentation, and keratosis pilaris, Graham Little Picardi Lassier syndrome, cardiofaciocutaneous syndrome, variety of other conditions including Noonan syndrome, diabetes, Down syndrome, woolly hair, and obesity, as well as drug eruptions, which result in a keratosis pilaris like eruption, such as with vemurafenib. A punch biopsy is not usually indicated or necessary to make a diagnosis of keratosis pilaris. However, it if, if it is done, the histology would display the following features. Marked follicular plugging of the hair follicle orifice with hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis, and acanthosis of the epidermis. There may be some lymphocytic infiltrate of the dermis, and hypergranulosis may also be present in this condition. What are the differentials for keratosis pilaris? This includes lichen nitidus, lichen spinulosis, perforating dermatoses such as chiral disease, milia, acne, atopic dermatitis, keratosis follicularis or Darius disease, and trichostasis spinulosa. In terms of the management option for keratosis pilaris, firstly, there are general skin care measures to try to reduce irritation and triggering keratosis pilaris. This includes prevention of excessive dryness, using soap-free washes, and regular moisturizing with emollients. First-line treatment options include exfoliative sponges, AHAs, including lactic acid and glycolic acid, or alternatively, using a urea cream with percentages 10 to 20% as an example, or salicylic acid wash or creams. Second line treatment options include topical retinoids such as adapalene and comedone extractor. Third line options include mild to moderate topical corticosteroids, topical tacrolimus, or oral isotretinoin. Fourth line options include chemical peels, lasers such as pulse dilaser or intense pulse light to target the redness, as well as photodynamic therapy. I hope you've learned something today about keratosis pilaris. We will see you at the next video.